thanks go to everybody who contributed to this. In, in my closing remarks, I just want to go back again to the very beginning uh, statement that I made when we started this workshop. The focus was on uh, practice and theory. And we said there is no good practice that's not rooted in a theory. Also, there's no valid theory without practice to prove its validity. So, the whole two days were about practice. When I look at this presentation, it doesn't tell me about how to test as much as it tells me how to teach. How to teach so I can meet the objectives that I set for myself from the very beginning. So when we say that testers are trained to do the test, we want also the teachers to know what kind of performance expected of their students. So that can be present in their minds in every minute when they are in classrooms. Because you prepare your students to be able to do that unrehearsed and untold before, beforehand. Uh, and the other day, just this week, one student said, what is our exam? I said, I don't know. Can be. What is it? What, what's going to be in the exam? I said, I have no idea. If you, I said, no, you just tell us how, how the exam is going to be, what's the format? I said, look. And she was, she's in the swim team of the university. I said, you claim you missed so many classes because you're on the swim team. How do I know that you're a good swimmer or swimmer at all? You know how to swim. You give me a piece of paper to tell you, tell me that you went that Friday or that Friday, you have a meet, you have a training. Okay. When I walk with you to that lake, it is thawing now. And I just, all of a sudden, I'm going to push you in that lake. If you survive, then you can swim. If you don't, they lie to me. It's your problem. I <laughs> don't think it doesn't matter anymore. He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot be sued for that. <laughs> because you said you're a swimmer. That's exactly when you learn a language. If you come to claim, anybody presents you to me as a number one who speaks Arabic or who knows Arabic, that kind of any test I give to you, I've been teaching you. I know what you can do in my test quizzes and in the classroom and so on. But I want to see the ramp up, just the whole performance that not me, if somebody else, if you walk out of this classroom and somebody receives the Arabic textbook in your hand, they would assume that you study Arabic, then they would immediately greet you and ask you a question. I'm just here for the first day in this university. Where is the library? You should be able to tell that person where the library because according to the level you are in this class, if you fail to say that, then you did not really achieve what we expect. That, that's that's something that you have in your mind in the classroom. When we talked about technology, we talked about practice. And the practice giving you tools, but the tools don't make a person a learner of the language. The tools are still tools. You can have a physician who has the best tools in the world, but if he doesn't know how to use them and to make it, to use them meaningfully to serve the job of that physician then that physician is not the best physician. But he has the best tools. And having the best tools does not make, that is, it, they have practice. You have practice and practice and practice. Uh, the first presentation that was on standards, those are goals set, but set for practice. Giving parameters, giving an umbrella thinking that what roots you in objectives that you want to reach. It's not just giving you anything you throw it in and you use it in classroom. So the whole workshop really worked so complementing each other, starting with this notion of practice. We as teachers, no matter where we teach, an elementary classroom teacher, and a graduate student in high, in the, in the most prestigious university, once they step in the classroom with the intention to deal with language, is a practitioner. 
And some of us got really caught, in, caught up in that kind of notion that when you work for a university, you kind of feel that you are beyond the classroom practice. It's only in your mind. It's only the ego that you build for yourself in your mind. But when you step in a classroom of pe beginners of your language, you are the practitioner that would enable them to use the language. You will be helped by your vision and your overall understanding what language teaching is about, what objectives do you have. And that what made a workshop like this N necessary. And we should have more and more and more of that. And learn from each other. Because we face different problems. Because we teach different ages, different languages, at different institutions. We would love to have a, not a workshop that we will tell you what to do, but we need a workshop also when you tell each other from reality, from real situations, what do I face in my classes? And what do you face? How do you deal with this problem? How do you deal with this problem? How do you deal with some people who had gone that road before you and developed theories through practices and know about other branches of knowledge that feed into teaching. Uh, no, no methodology or no approach for teaching really that's free from the influence of other theories in other fields, in, especially in the field of psychology for language, second language acquisition or for language acquisition. Then you have a whole host of issues that we think of as teachers. It doesn't mean if you are a teacher, you just teach and that's it, and you go home and do everything, every day, business as usual. Teachers are in constant development. So when you learn something from a uh, psychological theory, or you know something about the environment in which you live, the nature of the language of the learner, the, 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 the psychology of the learner, we'll talk about differentiation in classrooms. Differentiation is not only based on mental differentiation of the student. It, it, it includes the economic level, it includes the gender issues, includes the environment, the news about you. I wonder, would you teach the same class in Boston, for example, last week, the same way you have been teaching the same class in Boston a year ago? Uh, under the circumstances that Boston was going on, for example, you would think, include that in your research, you think and feel your students. That's practice, and I'm very strong on practice, but I don't think that practice can be anything without a theory that's rooted in it. That's why practice can be criticized, but we keep the same objectives and rules. And that's, I just want to thank, and I want to, uh, Colgate University has been very generous. Uh, they are not generous because they spent their own money. No, they are generous because spending other people's contributed money. <laughs> To that and the uh, corridor, uh, the humanities corridor, and the humanities uh, corridor, and, and the uh, NY6. Uh, yeah, uh, we, unfortunately, we don't have anything in it but to present them here and to uh, kind of uh, give a token uh, recognition. We spend their money wisely, <laughs> and uh, we, Kathy, Wafa, Muhammad, please come. And I want to thank uh, Nadi for. <laughs> This is something just to remember, to remember Colgate. Uh, Colgate took the, uh, I told you, if we, they spent a lot of people's money, but they put their name. This chart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. 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 Thank you to come in under very, very uh, calmer circumstances and weather being delayed in the planes and being uh, with us. But we would like you very much to be the ambassadors, to talk to others, because we would love to see everyone. And, and you see, you have wonderful, wonderful teams here, and yeah. inshallah we'll do more of that. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Nadi, we have to really thank you. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I can I can wait for the uh, from myself, but uh, this is what is. We should we should talk to uh, Dr. Bowman to convince to, to convince Chicago to let you stay with us for another day. Ah. Oh, so, so have some. Well, the general conference.